Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. I've got some news for you out of Indiana about Craig Hendry's case. A six-person jury found him guilty on two counts of misdemeanor harassment and one felony charge of stalking. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get the uh, story from the horse's mouth himself, or should I say, horse's ass. Hello, everybody. This is Craig Hendry. Citizen journalist reporting from the Vermilion County Jail. Oh, blow it out your ass. Well, if you're a journalist, I might as well go ahead and call myself an astronaut. I mean, calling myself an astronaut when I haven't earned the title is just about as delusional as you calling yourself a legitimate journalist, considering that you have no journalistic ethics whatsoever. I have just gotten out of jury trial yesterday where I was handed down a guilty verdict from a jury of six of my so-called peers. The prosecutor made three days worth of arguments about it, and I'm going to break down exactly the arguments that they made and try to summarize what they said I did. Uh, of course, I couldn't, ex I couldn't exactly give daily updates during the jury trial as my lawyer had asked me not to. But essentially, the state came in and they showed voicemails from the Clinton City Hall, which is, of course, where the alleged victims work. I was charged with three counts, uh, one felony stalking and two others were harassment, one against a woman named PK, which I'm sure I won't be allowed to say her name, <laughs> the other against a woman or sorry, the other against the Clinton of the city of Clinton employees at large. Now let's go ahead and go over the penalties for what Craig is facing and get a good idea of how much money he'll owe and what kind of jail sentences he could entail. Now the lighter of the two, harassment, he's got two charges of that, which means he could face up to 180 days in jail for each count and up to a thousand dollar fine. If he were to serve those consecutively, then that'd be 360 days, nearly a full year in jail, uh, minus the uh, good time that he would have. Now, as far as the felony charge of stalking, if it is a level six charge, then he's looking at a minimum of six months in jail, uh, up to two and a half years in prison, along with a fine of upwards of $10,000. So at the maximum with this particular set of charges, he could get upwards of nearly three and a half years in prison prison with a $12,000 fine, and that's not including court costs or lawyer fees. In fact, his lawyer alone would be thousands of dollars, so he's getting a real hit to his wallet. I sense an e-begging campaign coming up. So, the second charge was a little bit hard to understand because, of course, if a jury, if half a jury says, well, you know, we think that he, uh, you know, committed harassment against a police officer, you know, it's very vague, so, and of course that's probably what they, what they said. Anyways, the prosecutors came in and showed voicemails from the city of Clinton mayor's office, and in those voicemails it showed other individuals, not me, making threats and saying terrible things about people, uh, you know, going completely outside of their First Amendment right. And there he goes, throwing his own uh, sycophantic fans under the bus to save his own ass. Let's look at it this way, Craig. You're the one who went over there to harass them to begin with. You're the one who posted the video. You're the one who posted all the information online to make sure that your fans knew who to call and harass. Yeah, this is all on your head, dude. You sick your rabid dog followers on these guys and uh, you say, I'm not responsible. Well, somebody has to be held responsible and well, this is you. And the prosecutor said, look at all these voicemails. Look at all these phone calls that they received. And, uh, and then they, they pointed at me and they said, this is because of him. You know, completely excusing any conduct of any third party, but pinning everything on me. We asked everybody that showed up, do you think that Craig made a threat? Did Craig make any threatening gestures or, or say anything that put you in fear? And of course, the answer was always unequivocally no. But because these third parties made phone calls after viewing my video, 
and made these threats and said all these terrible things, they put that all on me. So essentially I was convicted for what other people said, and they said basically that I caused it, which of course I deny completely. I can't force other people, I can't cause other people to do things, especially when I've never even talked to those people, right? Because all the, all the phone calls that were made after viewing my videos, it wasn't like I told anybody, hey, go ahead and call these people and make these threats. I, I didn't say that at all. I, don't, I rarely say call these people. Most of the time I say make sure you don't call, but you know. And then I publish public information such as public phone numbers to public buildings. So essentially I've been convicted of a felony and two misdemeanors on account of other people calling some other people and making threats. I don't think I could sum it up any better than that. Yeah, you couldn't sum it up any better than that. Yeah. If this is the best response you had when it came to your arguments, then I wonder why the jury didn't see it your way. So, what's next? Essentially, I have sentencing on December 17th, and I am going to go and figure out what the length of the sentence they're going to try to give me. And as soon as we get done with sentencing, we have the right to file an appeal for it. But until then, we don't have the right to file an appeal. Now, I still owe my lawyer a little bit of money, so we're going to have to get that settled up, but I think I can do that. But the appellate court costs, they're going to be extremely expensive. And this was a three-day trial, and we'll be responsible for getting all of the three days of trial transcribed into paper format, which costs $60 an hour for the court reporter to do that. Oh, poor baby. So, if anybody would like to donate to this cause, anybody would like to donate to help me, uh, you know, pay for these appeal costs, you can get in touch with Tyler at CH and Ty Audits. Uh, I'm going to have my girlfriend monitoring that email as well. And you can find out how to help. Tyler's going to have links in the description below for donation links. But if you'd like to, you know, get a little more personal and talk to me or talk to my girlfriend or talk to Tyler about contributing and getting involved, you can do that at chintiaudits at gmail.com. Everybody, we are going to be continuing re-upload, so I appreciate it when you watch those. That really helps me out. That's a great way to support me without actually contributing any money. No, Craig, that's not a good way to go right there. In fact, that'll get your channel demonetized if you do too many re-uploads. And even if you have deleted these other videos and re-upload them, YouTube will still know about this because they do keep records of what you've uploaded. So if you want to lose your channel, by all means, do that. Go ahead and get your channel demonetized and taken down. Do whatever you want to do to destroy your channel. You know, if you watch a video, it gets it into the algorithm and it can then help it it's spread. And of course, I make money from ads on them. So that's another great way to help. But everybody, I, mean, I have not been broken mentally. They simply won the first round of the fight, and they did it dirty. You know, they did it completely dirty, pinning things that other people did upon me. You know, I definitely don't feel like it was fair, but try to fight these people in any other way than peacefully, and it won't end, uh, it won't end well for you. With that being said, uh, my brother Keith attended the trial, Keith Hendry, and he attended all three days of the trial. So hopefully he can give you a few updates and get into a bit more detail about what happened. I know he's probably going to be coming on the video right after I get off, or perhaps you saw his clip before this. With that being said, everybody, all help is appreciated. All support is appreciated. This is a difficult time for my family, as I will be gone from them for a few months at least. I've already been gone for over a month. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for your support, and we'll see you in the next video. You really should be thinking about your family, dude, instead of doing all this. I mean, because of your own damn stupidity, you're going to be missing some important developments with your children, especially the ones that are infants right now. You could be missing their first steps, their first words, and everything like that, while you are stuck in jail because of your idiocy. Think about that. Hello, um, to everyone on YouTube who's watching, thank you for watching, and thank you for staying with us through this case. My name is Keith James Hendry, I'm Craig Hendry's younger brother, and it kills me to know that the state is doing this to him. Uh, uh, the state didn't do this to him. 
Craig screwed Craig. I hate to break it to you, but your damn brother is a freaking criminal. Deal with it. It's very clear he's being held a political prisoner. Um, you know, I, I've i seen everything Craig has done. Uh, in fact, I recorded the first video ever uploaded to the channel. I've been through him through all of his endeavors, and this has to be one of the biggest jokes of a trial I've ever witnessed. Not that I've met, not that I've witnessed many trials. I mean, then how do you have any comparison to what is a joke of a trial if you have not had much experience with trials to begin with? Because if you have no baseline to compare it with, then you have nothing. You have no comparison. Either way, uh, the jury was a joke. Um, one of the jurors was asleep during the trial. I mean, literally sitting up there snoozing. You sure about that? You sure about that? You sure about that? Um, the prosecutors were playing on emotions. Um, we weren't even allowed to smile. I, I was sitting there, uh, kind of shaking my head during the trial. The judge threatened to kick me out of the courtroom if he said any, if he said he saw any movement of the lips or any movement of the head, shaking of the head, he'd kick me out. Well, duh, that kind of thing can be uh, interpreted as sending signals to other people in the courtroom, such as threats or something like that. So it's understandable that the judge would keep that under control. Because you do know that the judge has control of the courtroom, right? Uh, Ty was not allowed to wear his Henry Media Channel hoodie, yet the police officers who testified were allowed to wear their uni their uniforms. The state is corrupt. My brother's innocent. Um, his family is suffering. We are suffering from this. And your government doesn't care. And frankly, they don't care about you. So everyone should take this as a lesson. The government is nothing but evil. Um, and yeah, that's about all I have to say. Thank you very much for listening to me. Boy, you only showed your lack of intelligence on how the court system works in this particular scenario. A courtroom is not a forum where you get to dress however you see fit. A courtroom is a place where you dress in a professional manner. Those officers were dressed in their uniforms, basically meaning they were dressed for their profession. The hoodie is not considered to be professional dress code. Your total misunderstanding of how the system works does not mean that it is corrupt. It just basically means you have no clue about anything. And the reason why your family is suffering is not because of the state. It's because of your brother's dumbass mistakes, his dumbass actions, his actions alone but you know what i feel that this kind of thing would fall on deaf ears with this idiot right here if i were talking to him i don't think i could convince him of any of this were i to talk to him in person because his brain is too far gone his family pretty much has no notion of personal responsibility everything is somebody else's fault so at any rate guys i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one this could be some groundbreaking stuff right here Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?